Welcome to Real Bass Lessons. We're in for a treat today because Rob Gourlay is here again. Rob's my good friend. We have played music together, taught together, just about everything musical together, as well as uh, eat lunch together a lot. So it's Absolutely. always fun when Rob's here. We're going to play a couple of duets for you today. I thought it'd be fun for us to play and then maybe talk about them a little bit. Fair enough? Sounds good. Good. Let's start this one here. This one's called Tiny Mike and His Big Brother. By the way, we're working from this book today. Even though it's not technically a duet book, it's got duets in it. Here we go. Let me uh, get some drums going here. A one, two, three, four. Mike and his big brother. 
<laughs> in the book, there's one earlier called Tiny Mike, and it's just got the melody. So here we had his big brother, the bottom end. <laughs> Uh, anything you want to say immediately about so his, this, Rob? his big brother got out of jail and he came back, right? And this is when they were... That's over. very much yeah. the truth. There's a bunch of titles in this book, or actually in two or three books from this area, that for some reason I had them, I had in my mind that Chicago gang kind of stuff. Oh, yeah? That yeah. Chicago 30s and 40s, 20s, 30s, and 40s. So exactly, Tiny Mike's big brother was in jail. <laughs> he came out and they did a duet. That's the. Uh, this is the same piece that uh, Dave Ellison was working on. In that, <laughs> exactly uh, when he held up his saw. book. Exactly, yeah. he said, "Good reading, you betcha." Cool. Yeah, good readings for anyone. I think you should know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Rob, it's such a pleasure to hear you play. One of the first things that I notice is the touch, the sound. You've got such a nice touch, and you made it blend. We blended together so well. It's always been fun uh, playing together and, you know, especially with the different instruments and the yes, different uh, yes. kind of timbres to them. I think uh, they kind of automatically blend and, and work well together. You bet. So it's a great sounding bass you have there. Thank you. I knew you would choose this bass to Did play you? that yeah. on. I just knew it. So I was yeah. thinking, now, which bass do I want to play that, that sounds good against that one? And I chose this one. When Rob first purchased this instrument, it was because he wanted to play this against my fretless Rob Allen with the big low B string. And you were doing a bunch of comping. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to do the, you know, the chords up high. Of course. Of and it worked and sounded that. beautiful. Yeah. And I considered playing that bass with this one, but I thought, ah, let's go a different direction. And I chose this one. While this one has a nice big fat bottom, it's got a real clarity to it also. Yeah, it sure Cheers. Is. It's not something you usually hear on a Fender up in those high notes. Agreed. Um, I don't, you know, a vintage kind of. Sure, it's a nice bass. One. By the way, this is a custom shop. <laughs> it just looks like an old base. It's a custom shop copy of a 1960 P base. What else about uh, maybe this music we just played, Rob? Anything else you want to say about it? Um, it just it just reminds me of a lot of kind of classic jazz, maybe some course. Grant Green or, you know, Ooh. I mean, a lot of different artists that did kind of bluesy sort of stuff that uh, kind of has that, that element to it that... Uh, I don't know why I hadn't thought of Grant Game, but of course. Yeah. And it could even be a Wes Montgomery. Wes played yeah. a lot faster. But that sort of guitar trio and that sort of dark, bluesy, jazzy, yeah. but blues with that jazz at the same thing. You bet. Yeah, if it would, they they jacked the tempo up and oh, did of course, smoking at the half note. That's version exactly or right. Yeah. This one's interesting too because it's an interesting uh, form. It's an eight bar form, and it kind of sounds like a blues, but it kind of sounds like a minor rhythm changes. But I just mm -hmm. kind of played played around with it and made it a little bit unique. Yeah, it's got some interesting changes in it. You bet, beautiful That's solo really... you played. I like oh, it. Thanks, you too. <laughs> it was killer. I lost the drummer there for a minute, but I think we got him back. We got, yeah, he. I don't know, he was having a beer or something. He wasn't before. listening to us, is what it was. <laughs> but he comes cheap. <laughs> and with the COVID environment, he's good for us right now. Yeah, yeah he's still alive, which is always cool. key. Um, I think playing, or I know so, playing duets with another bassist is also valuable. To start with, that unison stuff sounds killer. And then, of course, here in harmonies between whether it's a bass line and chords or a bass line and a melody, a bass line and a solo. And when I say play doing, you know, duets, you know, I, I often tell people, get together with a friend and play duets. I'm not talking about jamming on E. You know, you can do that and that's fine. But I'm talking about having something predetermined that you're going to play. Now, it doesn't have to be notated in a book, but something predetermined so you can determine, is it right? Is it sounding good? Are we making it sound, um, you know, the way it's supposed to? And as soon as you play with two people, and by the way, that can be recorded in yourself, two lines, but as soon as you put two lines together, now we're thinking about, we have to hear about a bunch of those things which we may not necessarily think about when we're playing by ourselves or just a bass line, and that might be like dynamics, articulation, mm -hmm. phrasing, of course, intonation. So a lot of other musical aspects are a concern when you're playing duet. That's how I used have used a lot of these duets written in my books. We've done them many, many yeah, times. Yeah. Well, and and I think it's kind of a unique thing. I I'm not sure if, if I ever really did you know any bass duets before we started you know you started bet. lessons with you. you. Bet that's true. It's not something everybody does. No. And um, and it, but it's a really valuable thing. Um, I think about it, uh, especially when learning tunes where you would, you know, like learn the, learn the melody, learn the bass line, learn the chords, you know, right immediately you have to 
cover all those different Correct. things to, yes. to do, uh, learning songs in that way. Yeah. And uh, and that that's a great way to do it. And a lot of your play alongs that you have, which with with almost all the books, yes, where you can can have you know if you don't have somebody that can play, there's they're on there, which you is bet. awesome. Yeah, the play alongs uh, with as Rob mentioned with some of the books, it's simply just playing in unison with the mm. play along. It's an audio example to listen to, but it's a a guide, a model to copy and to fit with both again with all those things we just talked about, but also just the sound and the feel, the time. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned playing duets being unique. I was so fortunate that somehow I started doing it immediately. When I was a youngster and played, you know, I, I played music like everybody else, but that was typically with two or three or four musicians in a band. I did play a lot of duets with my father, though, which was interesting. Really? Now, we never read things like this, but we would play a song. He'd say, play that melody while I play this, or why don't you play the bass line this time? We'd go from different parts of the songs. Now, was this at a gig, or was this just 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 practicing? practicing Now, when we're on a gig, we're playing with the band, you know, situation. But I went off to college, and I made friends with a guitarist, and I was a guitarist at that time. I was playing bass, too. I was a guitarist, and we played guitar duets immediately. And we were trying to learn to read music, so we were doing really, really simple, like little uh, uh, grade school level little cello duets and stuff, and little simple Bach pieces. And we were reading and we were playing duets. Well, that immediately transformed into me playing bass duets with the guitar. And then I made friends with the trombone player, who played jazz, but also a classical player. And he immediately said, oh, man, I love playing duets. So we started playing (laughs) classical duets. This was back, oh, gosh, you know, I was 19 years old. And... I just fell in love with it. It allowed me to work on, to think about those things I mentioned earlier, which I didn't necessarily think about them in when I was playing in a band situation. And I have played duets forever. And when I went to Texas, I played duets with Steve Bailey and Mark Minkler. I mean, like, constantly. We did it so much that we ran out of bass music real quick. And we were doing, again, uh, cello music, and we were doing trombone music, and we were doing piano music. Uh, we did euphonium, a whole bunch of that. We'd just go buy a book and go, hey, this is a bass clap. And it, truthfully also, we'd go, screw that. Let's just get this one a trouble clap because we ran out of them. I read duets. I'm not joking. You know, some people talk about how much or how often should you do it. I don't know. But I read duets for, I would say, 10 to 12 years, probably two, three hours a week, every week. Wow. So I had lots of duet practice. I, we played the bop duets. And then when I first met oh, you the, and I, uh, we started Bugs playing Bauer. the Bugs Bauer bop Bugs duets. Bugs Bauer, that's right, yeah. And then I started writing a, a lot of uh, uh, books, and I started including duets. I remember playing the PC uh, lines after I wrote those. I would consider that playing duets because I'd play them along with Mark Minkler, and I'd say, let's do one chorus of the 12 bars, the unison, and then you play the bass line, and I'll play the solo. And then how about you play chords, calm chords, mm-hmm. and I'll play it. Sure, so, you know, I've been, I've found it, an unbelievably valuable practice to play duets with a person. Think about it again. Matching that unison line, that's valuable. Matching intonation, matching phrasing. Then, like I say, you start to listen for articulation and dynamics. and All those things just, they are brought to the forefront to your attention playing duets. Hmm. Well, and, and really all your your uh, real bass lessons, you're always like, get your bass out. Always. So it's the same thing. Doing, exactly. doing a duet, really, right. you know, whether it's just the, the line. or I published that. a book about, oh, what, two years ago called uh, Duets for Electric Basses. It is 100 pages of bass duets. <laughs> I do. I don't know if this one's in there or not. This is the first time we've ever played this one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we've yeah. played a lot of duets together, but that's good. Thanks, Rob. This is cool. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. You're welcome.